Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mountain Nostalgic Runner. And for those who live in the United States of these Americas, um, happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate. Um, I don't, <laughs> uh, clearly, but I did actually um, take the time to get myself um, like a turkey tenderloin and like um, scalloped potatoes. I could not, I did not have time or really want to make green bean casserole, even though I love green bean casserole. That's kind of my bag, but I didn't do that this time. Um, I also had um, dressing and um, Brussels sprouts. So that's what I'm going to be having um, for like my Thanksgiving meal. But anyway, hopefully you guys are having a good day or if you don't celebrate, enjoy your time off, enjoy your day of rest. Um, I did run this morning um, and that is really chilly. Um, the winter is wintering. But anyway, that's not why we're here. Um, we're here to discuss The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 14, and this is episode two. And it's called A Sobering Separation. So I also did watch the after show. So I'll go into that a little bit too um, with this. Um, with Beverly Hills and then also with um, Salt Lake City, I do watch the after show. I This is my question, Bravo. Anyone who watches that might... Because the thing is... See, the thing is... <laughs> With these Bravo shows and with these type of reviews, I know a lot of times, depending on how big your audience is, um, people from Bravo like watch the reviews to get people's feedback because it's a good way for them to, you know, be engaged and know what's working, what's not working. Um, and I know others have said it, but I'm going to say it too because I want it to change. Why doesn't Potomac have an after show? I just really want to know why. Um, or even like um, a HQ. Because even Brony, the rebrand, has an HQ. And even like Orange County had an HQ, which is kind of similar to After Show. It's not quite the same because um, I like the um, After Show format a little bit more because it's a little bit more interactive and you have the ladies kind of together commensurating their feelings on things. Um, but you gave Roni one, but Potomac doesn't have one. That's my only gripe. Um, also before this, before I do wrap up this review, I am going to share what I'm thankful for because I think that's important. Um, even though I don't necessarily celebrate Thanksgiving, it's good to, you know, give grace and be gracious of things. Anyway, but without further ado, let's actually get into the review. So we continue where we left off because remember that the episode left at to be as a to be continued. And we have Kyle and Dorit. There's continuing their talk and Dorit is not having it. She is on 10. 10, 10, 10. And um, keeping her foot on Kyle's neck. Because Kyle's just backtracking, saying, well, if you're going to be this way, if you're going to be mean, then da 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 you know. Even though all Dorit is doing is asking the simple question that all of us want to know, what did I do for you to be mad at me? Dorit has, from, from my perspective, and this is my opinion, I feel like Dorit has every right to be upset with Kyle because it's very clear why she's upset. Like, there's no... It's obvious the reason why she's upset is because, you know, Kyle downplayed her friendship and is kind of being high key manipulative towards her and kind of iced her out last towards the end of last season and is really kind of trying it right now. And um, Kyle's reasoning changes constantly. And this and now she basically finally told her the reason behind it is because of the Bravo um, BravoCon thing where she basically stated to so they were playing a shady game because of course that's what they do at BravoCon and Andy asked Dorit who was her favorite um, Richard sister and uh, she pretended like she was hesitating and Kyle like pushed her and made her and pretend she was going to take the shot 
And um, Kyle pushed her and knocked down her shot. And then Dorit's like, well, is it you? I mean, is Kathy first? This and this, this. But ever, it was very clear that she was joking. And Kyle is like basically playing in our faces now saying, well, that hurt my feelings. Even though, girl, you, that, okay, this is the thing that gets me about the BravoCon thing. Because the BravoCon that they're talking about happened before season 13. So she was really mad at her about that. She could have brought it up then. Just like how Dorit brought up to Erica how her shady comment upset her because Hit Dog will holler. Because um, now full circle is kind of the opposite. She's like, no, the, I was upset because you were actually telling the truth. Um, <laughs> you know, so there's that. But anyway... Kyle is being a professional victim in her, um, like, per usual. And she's like, how are you mad at me for me being mad at you? And it's like, girl, she already explained to you why she's mad. Like, it, oh, my gosh. And so Kyle can't take the heat per usual. She storms out of there and gets out of there and decides she's going to leave. Garcelle goes to talk to Kyle. Of course, Garcelle has Kyle's back and is on Kyle's side because Garcelle cannot stand to read. That's the only reason why we're not getting, um, you know, Garcelle holding her accountable. If it was anyone else, you know Garcelle will hold her accountable because Gar Garcelle is one of those people in the show is pretty reasonable. But when it comes to read, Garcelle will see it for Dorit. So we know that's what it is. And then um, Dorit, um, ends up talking to Erica and um, Bose. Um, and I'm going to call her Bo, Bose because I don't want to murder her name. And the boss herself, aka boss, she deserves, she, she, she deserves it all and does not deserve me like butchering her name because she's that girl. Anyway, um, and this episode, we do see more of why she is that girl. And I'm going to love, I'm going to love her. I already know that. But they go and talk to her and console her. And then basically Dorit and Kyle both leave and that pretty much ends things. And then Bose, Bose, Bose goes and talks to um, Sutton. I don't know where Sutton was at because Sutton missed the part that Kyle and Dorit both left. And she's like, oh, okay, well, all right. And that ends that. Hey, apologies if um, my sound sounded off briefly because I didn't notice until I was talking that my mic went out. So I have my other mic who's a backup mic and fully charged so this one shouldn't go out. But anyway, um, Whisper says hi. Because <laughs> we know she loves being on this camera. If I was in the other room, we wouldn't see her, but it echoes a lot more in that room. So that's that. But anyway, so the next thing we see that Bose is in her bag. And this is where we get to know her more. And we find out, basically since she's retired, because um, she's been the CFO for multiple companies, like Netflix, uh, Endeavor, um, Uber, um, just m wearing multiple hats. And we also find out at this workshop a little bit more of that journey. So she is putting together a workshop, and she ha has this workshop shop called Badass Workshops. And... Um, this is also where we find out how um, she met her um, husband, who is no longer with us, um, because he passed away from a terminal cancer. But um, anyway, so I, this is where I, I already was, I already did fall in love with her the first episode, but this is where I was like, oh yeah, 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 no, 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 she's that girl. Because one thing that I will say, and I'm sure other content creators, especially black content creators, have said the same thing. She's unapologetically black, black as, as fuck. fuck, and I love it. <laughs> she is black as she is. It's so it is refreshing, refreshing, because especially being in Beverly Hills, you get the vibes. You know, like a lot of times, the vernacular isn't always vernacularing, and even to a certain extent, if you were to compare Bose to like me, like. I feel like my vernacular isn't all the way probably as black as F as like most people, but that's just because that's just me. You know what I mean? Um, 
but I do love that she's that. And she even says in her journey of like her meeting her special someone, she thought she was going to like meet her African king, but she ends up meeting this like Italian dude, Peter St. John, um, because her last name is St. John. And um, she talks about how she, you know, was in her bag trying to balance out her career. And this is all at the workshop. And then she finds out while she's in, doing her thing, her husband now has ter a terminal cancer. And then right around that time when that's, that's happening, because, oh, one of the things that she did that we didn't know behind the scenes stuff, but we see it at all the time, like at least once, we see it once a year. She was the one who helped close the deal for Pepsi to be the sponsor for the NFL Super Bowl halftime show. So thank Bose for that. We That halftime show, budgeting the way it budgets, that is a Bose move. She did that before Jay-Z and all them got involved. So that halftime, she's the one who put that together. I was like, oh, child, I did not know. So, but she said, like, after all that happened, um, the company that she was working for, I can't remember. She it was a it was a it was a major company said that she was not pulling her weight the way they expected it. So she saw the writings on the wall and she decided she was gonna move on. And one thing that was also noticeable this season, this not not this season, wow, the scene is that she said after retiring, she's actually been busier than ever because she is now her own boss. She does, she has her own podcast. Um, she does podcasts, she does her own workshops. And so she's booked and busy and make her own money. And she's her own boss. And she's like, you know what? That is the way I like it. Because being, um, even when it comes to the corporate, being a corporate boss, the way she was, someone being control over your destiny and, you know, you being job eliminated and whatnot, that's still a for real thing. Um, so even, and, and that's a perspective that, Unless you are the CEO of the company or unless it's your company, you just always have to be mindful of that. And yes, she was a boss within her companies that she worked for, but she wasn't the boss. She still had someone to answer to. And I'm going to lie, if she ever has a like a, a engagement thing that happens around here in Chicago, I think I want to go. Because I was, inspi I was inspired by this thing. I ain't going to hold you. Because I've always wanted to get to the point where I would be my own boss. Um, that's actually one of the main reasons why I've been a remote worker for so long. Um, for those who don't know, I've been a remote girl working from home since for 10 years now. I'm old school work from home. And the reason why is because you do get a perceived sense of freedom and the perceived sense of you, you are in control of your own destiny. The key word is, is perceived. It really isn't that. You know, you still have someone to answer to and you, your job can be gone the next day. And I mean, that happened to me earlier this year, but I bounced back very quickly. But anyway, that's kind of um, what I got from this scene. It was an amazing, pretty powerful scene, but like in a positive, affluent way. And then even when you're watching the people who are going to the workshops, there's other people that look like me. And I love it. I love it. So then next we see that um, Kyle meets up with Sutton for, um, I think it was like for lunch probably. And um, the revelation of them being cool again, I still don't trust it all the way, but... We'll see. Um, even the producers even asked a, asked a shady question. Um, they're like, so Sutton, um, what, so what makes you trust Kyle again? And then Sutton's like, what makes you think, who, who said that I trust her? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and so what we find out is they are working their, on their relationship, but it still ain't what it was. Like, they're still baby stepping in. And they do get to talking about Kyle and her separation. And Sutton, girl, girl, you know Kyle's going to use this against you later, right? I just really hope you know this. Like, right now, it's not that. And even in the after show, she wasn't doing that. Um, but I feel like at any time, if Kyle feels a certain way, she could flip it. Um, 
because Kyle at least is not playing our face when it comes to that and realize that son's unsolicited advice is because she cares. And I think the difference is, and we do find out in the after show how they actually got back to the place where they're okay. Um, it's because Kyle basically said, you know, son apologized to her multiple times. It wasn't just one time. It was multiple times. It was on camera, off camera. Um, they had a whole entire heart to heart. And what I find interesting is what Kyle says is just all about what Sun did. But then when Sun talks, she says behind the scenes, Kyle actually did apologize back. Like we actually both apologize. Now, I don't know if I fully believe that all the way. I'm not calling Sun a liar, but Sun is a glass half full kind of girl. So I feel like she's someone that will sometimes take someone who she cares about or wants things to be good um, half apology or a non-apology apology as an apology. But since it happened behind the scenes, we have no way of knowing if it was really genuine or not. But the after show actually helped put a little bit more of a bow on how this scene even is a thing. Um, <laughs> so that's the other reason why I watch after show because sometimes the show, you know, they have to cut things out, and and also there's things that happen behind the scenes that we don't we're, we're not privy to. So it, like sometimes like scenes doesn't make any sense because I was just like, how does sudden felt so bold to like start giving her advice about how she needs to like be the one who files for divorce? Because that's what happened the scene, by the way. She was like, yeah, you need to be the one who files for divorce. I think you should do it like immediately, and. Kyle, I thought she was going to be more offended than she was, but she wasn't. But this also explains the after show, and I would highly recommend watch the after show. It actually helps explain why things are the way they are. And Kyle's like, I get how most people are used to contentious divorces. Um, I don't see it happening in my situation. And side note, I do find it interesting that we have the divorces happening on Potomac or separations and divorces happening in Potomac. We had it even happening with Beverly Hills. And you have in two scenarios, a similar situation where the women do not see their uh, former spouses going low. They don't see it happening. And I love that son's like, girl, money changes things. Money can change good people to complete demons. Okay, she didn't say that. I said that. <laughs> I mean, it can change people. And you're where, and especially in their case, Mauricio and Kyle do not have a prenup. They came from kind of humble beginnings. Like they got, um, Kyle, I guess, got married to Mauricio when she was 23. So they didn't really have anything and they built from the ground up, but they built it together. Um, now, I know Mauricio has said in public multiple times when they're still together that they build it together. But when it comes to like the divorce filing and stuff like that, that's different. And also in the after show, they did shed more light on it because Garcelle and all the other ladies chimed in because pretty much everyone agrees with Sutton on it. Not for the reason that Sutton's saying because Sutton is literally going off of her experience about her her husband her former husband tried to do her dirty and didn't work thank god um because <laughs> son wouldn't be said to kneeing if it wasn't for you know her having the wherewithal to be able to bounce back and do what she needed to do but um erica's like i would do it i i would be you know at least file because i think what kyle's interpreting at it as is Filing doesn't necessarily mean you have to go through the divorce. You can just file. And even Garcelle mentioned something that was interesting. And also, to side note, I don't have any dog in this fight. I personally would file, but like I don't really know because I've never been in this kind of situation. And I'm and I also, and I think I shared in my last video, the Potomac video, I don't have immediate family members that have either. So I don't this is not within the realms of what I understand. Um, like I had a former roommate who was dealing with it, but that was a different situation because that was a toxic situation. So I would have definitely been the one who did all the things. And even the way my former roommate handled that, I was like, child, I would handle it differently, but that's just me because I'm also very petty. But, 
Um, hey, um, but what um, Garcelle mentioned in the after show, which I agree with, um, is that, um, you know, you should file so you can at least get the understanding of what's going on with the finances. Because, you know, that can get a little tricky. Especially once, because the other thing is, I don't even know if Kyle's even thinking of this, but it's like, I know you're, you have a little bit of hope, but he's clearly moved on. Like, what if you meet your special someone and you want to get remarried? But maybe in her case, she doesn't want to. Maybe that's why she's like, I ain't worried about it because I'm not getting remarried. But you never know. You know what I mean? So anyway. Um, but that's kind of what happened in this scene. And um, I guess also this is a scene where it was on camera, but we find out later on that Kyle shared something more with Sutton that Sun will end up exposing later on in this episode. So next, we are in Bose's home, and we meet her assistant. And I'm like, of course she's fabulous, just like Sun is. She has an amazing assistant. And her assistant's name's Nico. Hi, Nico. You are cute. I, I'm already liking you. And um, basically, Bose is preparing um, to have um, Erica and Dorit at her house. And she's like getting the um, snacks and the, the, the fixings ready to go, sprinkling gold on it. She's like, I hope they like gold as much as I do. And child, Bose likes gold. She really, really likes gold. And her home, I love her home. Her home is very, it's glitzy and glamorous when it has a lot of, the, it has all gold trim. That is the only thing I'm like, ooh. It's almost, it's, it's not quite gaudy, but it was getting there. It was, because I personally just don't love seeing gold everywhere because for me that can come off as gaudy. But it, the way she did it, it's not, it wasn't as bad as what I would thought it would be. Um, but also too, it was like gold meets black as F. Like her, even her decorum is black as F. And not basic. I'm just like, see. <laughs> like, yes. Yes, 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 and yes. Anyway, so then Dorit and Erica do show up. And um, immediately they ask. And this is what, what got me when it came to Erica and Dorit. They, I was just like, for y'all being Beverly Hills ladies, y'all didn't really think y'all should take y'all shoes off? I love that Bose was like, oh, got to take the shoes off. I'm just like, come on now. You don't wear your outside shoes inside. But other thing that was fabulous about Bose is she also had um, slip, she had slippers for them, for them to wear. So once they got in, they had slippers because they then they were going outside immediately. And she had this nice little like kind of like canopy type situation set up in her backyard for them to have like the snacks and the drinks and to catch up on what happened. And so, um, Bo's asked, like, you know, what's going on with you and Kyle? And Bo's also shared, I did talk to Sutton before, um, I had Sutton over the day of or day before the party, and she kind of gave me a lowdown that y'all were not in a good place, but what happened in that conversation? And, you know, Dorit explained everything that happened, and then this is where Dorit states that, like, there is always, there's always a different reason every time I talk to her about why she's mad at me. And she's like, frankly, I'm sick of it. And um, Erica's just watching them go back and forth because as this is happening, the sudden and um, Kyle situation is still, they're still at their um, lunch thing. And Kyle's talking about Dorit and what's going on with all that. And I don't remember Sutton really having an opinion on it so much, but Erica did have an opinion back at um, Bo's place and in the confessional. She says, she's been saying the same thing the whole entire time. She's like, I think you guys are going through hell in your home life and y'all are bringing it in your friendship and now it's combustible. And she's like, I think that's literally what's happening because they, they literally are going through this. And this, we kind of saw it coming, coming last season and it kind of does make me wonder, is this real or pre-produced? Because it's a little too 
obvious, but I'm going to pretend. <laughs> I'm going to pretend. Um, because we saw the Easter eggs from it last season that like both of them going through a separation at the same time, either this will bring them closer together or it will not. There's no happy medium. And right now it's on the, uh, on the side, it is not. And then, so then Erica switches subjects. It's like, so what's going on with you and PK and Dorit's, you know, sharing more light to that. She's like, yeah, um, I haven't told my kids yet on what's happening. Um, and then Bose is like, wait, you haven't told your kids? And we're like, yeah, I, I want to. And Dorit long-windedly, mind you, did explain Father in the after show why. Because, really, because, God, I mean, PK's been living in a hotel. This happened before they announced their separation. Um, but she does share truthfully that, like, Every time PK and Dorit were getting in arguments, he would leave and stay at the hotel. So, like, it was even happening even before they actually separated. And then, for his job, he was doing that. So, it's not, unfortunately, it isn't that unusual right now. Like, him just staying at a hotel is a normal thing because it's been happening. And I love that she at least was truthful saying that it's been happening. And, um... But she's like, yeah, in the after show, she explains, I don't want to like bring my kids into it until I have more of a night, until both of us have an idea of what we're doing exactly. And we have like actual answers because me bringing it to my kids, but not having any answers doesn't make any sense right now. And I agree. It doesn't make any sense to bring this, bring the kids into something. And your answer is, I don't know, you know? When it comes to a being, you know, and I'm only speaking from like me being a child myself, you look for stability when it comes to your parents. So when your answer to like your kid is, I don't know, that is not, that's not, that's not a stable answer. That's a very unstable answer. That's like not, that's very unstable answer. So no kid wants to hear that, like, their parents are flying at the feet, that they're at the feet of their pants. Like, no one wants to hear that. I mean, yes, we know now, especially now, me being an adult, I know that's how life is and how everyone is literally flying off the feet of their pants. But as a child, you perceive your parents as, like, Superman, Superwoman, like, you don't you don't want a non-concrete answer. And so she's like, until I have, until we have more of a concrete answer, I don't really want to, you know, tell them anything is different. Um, I'm not lying to them. You know, if they do have questions, I am answering the questions. But right now he is staying at a hotel and like, that's what it is. So that's, that's pretty much what ends there. And then um, we go on to the next thing. All right. So next we have, and I apologize if like my nose looks weird right now. My allergies have been kicking my butt since yesterday. And it's gotten a little bit better, but not really. Um, so if I'm doing what I'm doing right now, that's why. Because I'm trying so hard not to sneeze. Okay. Of course, as I said, I'm trying not to sneeze. <laughs> Sneeze. But anyway, so um, we are at Sun's place and Avi. Hi, Avi. <laughs> Avi, who is um, Sun's assistant, he is there helping Sun get prepared um, to bring like a care package um, to basically help cheer Kyle up. And so Erica and Kathy show up at her house and join her. And um, we find out that from sudden that she's worried for, she is worried for Kyle. She's like, I'm worried for Kyle. And I think we need to do something to cheer her up. And um, she does share that Kyle said that Mo has, okay, a picture in the office or had a picture in the office of like him and his wife um, kissing. So him and Kyle kissing, like, you know, office picture and replace it with a picture of him and the dancing with the stars lady 
Now, for those who don't follow this outside the show, there was rumors that him and the Dancing Star Lady had something going on. So the fact that he did that, this is in the family home, by the way, still, it is very intentional. It's very effed up. I don't, I am not here for it. I think that was really, that was Drake of you. There we go. I mean, he's the word Drake. It's very Drake of you. Yeah. Um, anyway, so because, and, and, and none of them like this, none of them are cool with this. And so they're, oh, heck no. So the plan is though, they have like a pizza make pizza making kit that they're um, putting together and they're going to go, um, surprise Kyle at her place. And they're going to have like a pizza making pajama, pajama party, basically. Um, and it's actually, it was actually cute and really sweet that they did this. And I'm kind of like, I would love that. You know, right now I wouldn't like that because I don't really like people coming over my place right now, but this is because I don't really love this place. And this is like a temporarily place for me, even though I made it my home and made my own I had pictures and stuff hanging, you know, I made it my personal deal. But this is not my permanent destination. But like once I start actually fully having people over and, um, you know, being more of a host and whatnot, I would love it if I'm ever down, someone just pops up. It's like, hey, how are we doing? I would love that. Anyway, so they are literally on this stakeout. And it is com it's actually, it was actually kind of a fun scene. Because we see that <laughs> they're sneaking around, right? And because they're again, they're surprising her. So they have to find a way to get some get her to open the gate so they can make it come in. Because they she has like a, a a gate to to the driveway, and then from the gate, then you know the house. And so um, they're like, so who's gonna? So we got to do maybe delivery. Should we pretend we're a delivery driver? And so Kathy decides she's going to be the one who pretends to be a delivery driver, but she's like Amazon delivery, but it's Kathy. So it still sounds like Kathy, but it's like, she sounds crazy. So it's delivery driver, delivery driver. It's like, Amazon delivery driver here. Amazon. <laughs> it was funny and they were dying in that car. And then as they pulled up, they're all like this in the car, you know. And then they get to the front of the door and they ring the doorbell. Because also, too, while all this is happening, Kyle really is not expecting anyone to come over. She's like in like just her normal stuff. And it's just her and Portia at the house. They're about to make dinner. And um, she's confused. She's like, I hope it's not a package. I hope it's not a package. And of course it was a package. And side note, so for those who haven't watched the show before or didn't watch last season, they're probably like, wouldn't you expect a package if it's coming? Kyle is a, a, a shopaholic, so she orders things online, like, all the time. So the funny thing is, this is not far-fetched. This is very on brand that Kyle would have, like, a delivery. Because she, we found out, we have found out throughout the years that Kyle shops online constantly. Okay, that's like her thing. Anyway, so they do pop up and surprise her. And she is genuinely surprised. And even though I don't see it for Kyle all the time, this was quite cute and quite adorable. And so they get to the house. They're doing the pizza making. They're having a ball. And then they're um, trying to cheer her up. And Kyle... You know, up until this point, she was like, it's just so quiet here. I just don't like this empty nesting thing. Because, I mean, she pretty much kind of is. Because Sophia's out with her friends. So Sophia's about to be out the door. And then Portia's the only one there. So it's quiet. And she's in a big, giant family home with just two people. You know? And Sophia's a teenager. She doesn't want to hang out with her mom all the time. But... That's what it is. Um, 
But anyway, overall, it's a cute scene. Yeah. Also, side note, um, in this scene, um, Kathy did explain how, like, she, throughout the years, have not always seen it for Mauricio, but she wanted the best for Kyle. So, it's very clear that Kathy is Team Kyle all day, and in a weird, messed up way, I hate to say this, but, like, I think that her being separated from Mauricio is actually bringing Kathy and Kyle closer, because Kathy's never really cared for Mauricio because some of the things he's some of the things he's done, like as far as business is concerned and behind the scenes stuff, um, when it comes to like speaking bad, poorly about you know Kathy's husband, you know the Hiltons. Um, so I feel like a, some of the divide that Kathy and Kyle have had. Because this separation's happening, it's actually not as much of a thing. Um, but also, too, we do find out in the after show, Kyle is the reason why Kathy um, joined this season as a friend of. She's like, um, Kathy, you know, behind the scenes, explaining like, Kyle needs my support, and... Kyle will put on this strong front that everything's okay, everything's fine, but she's falling apart on the inside. And I'm going to do what I can to be there for my sister. So it is quite endearing, even though I don't care for Kathy either. I don't really see for either of the Richard sisters. Only one I see for is um, Kim, and hopefully Kim's doing okay. Um, but I do like that. They're cl I do like that it seems like a lot of the issues are mending on its own because of time, need to support each other, be there for each other. Um, so it is nice to see that. I will say that. Gosh, sorry. In the final scene, we see that Dorit and PK meet up and they talk about what does the separation mean and what's going on with it. And Dorit... I never thought I would be on Dorit's side when it comes to a lot of things. And right now, I am rooting for Dorit. Dorit, the reason why she's team too much when it comes to this group is because she's not even heard in her home. And it to me, what I got this seeing is PK was upset. Basically, the show divided them. I think that's what happened. Because prior to this show, Dorit was under her under his thumb. And that's what he wanted. He wanted a trophy wife, and that's what he had through that. But as she started being on the show, making more money, making her own moves, having the resources to build her own brand, businesses, and whatnot. And yes, contracts is his thing. And but she has her own thoughts and feelings of how she wants to do her own pro um contract and he's feeling like he's not needed anymore like very machismo very machismo and um this whole entire scene is pk airing out his grievances but like dorit does didn't get to dorit didn't get a chance to air out anything that she had going on it was all pk and other thing that i found quite disgusting is I will say this, PK does look a lot healthier and he does look good now. But like, how are you going to flaunt like I'm single PK now and y'all and both and <laughs> after show? God, she, she cracked me up, but she wasn't wrong. She's like, single what? You're, we're still legally married. No, you're not. <laughs> I know just because you're living in a hotel, you thinking that ain't that, but what? And that was the thing that got me. And she's like, and, and, Dorit, you know, being gracious, kind of, not really gracious, but I felt like Dorit kind of felt like she was just inching down to like, you know, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I did not like that. It's like, PK, you dirtbag. Like, why would you think that is a flex to say in front of like someone who you're, you haven't even been separated from legally that long. Like the news just broke out of the separation you know, it hasn't even been a full week the way the show is going. And so that was messed up. 
And he says that he basically got sober for Dorit. And it's like, and that's what gets me is that he is using Dorit as a crutch to like, I did what I needed to do for you, but you didn't change at all. And it's like, no, PK, you got sober for yourself. You did not just get sober for Dorit. You got sober for your children. You did not just get sober for Dorit. The things that Dorit has already aired out when it comes to like your gambling issues and the tax problems and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure maybe a lot of those problems would not have, no, there's no, maybe. Most likely, a lot of those problems that you had would maybe not have taken place, I'm still wanting to say maybe, allegedly, let's say allegedly, would not have taken place if you weren't a drinker. A lot of crappy decisions happen, including the financial kind, if you're someone who is a drinker or maybe have a problem. Let's call a thing a thing. And also, too, you wouldn't be looking the way you look right now if you're still drinking. So, cut the BS, PK. Cut the BS. Um, Dury handled this with grace, but one thing that I noticed that was different from probably all the other times we saw Dorit is because I think they're both wrong in this relationship. Just like when it comes to Dorit and Kyle, both of them are wrong. It's kind of two sides of the same coin, you know, because Dorit and Kyle, whether you love or hate Kyle, Kyle's more obviously in your face a certain way, but Dorit has similar characteristics and that's why they got along. And now they're doing it to each other. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm seeing it. They're literally doing what they've done to others to each other. Um, and then with PK, um, this was the first time that I saw Dorit was listening to hear and not listening to respond. And because um, we've always seen throughout, the, like even last season, we saw that he, she would do that she she was listening to respond a lot last season. And then the other thing that came into play is, because basically PK said he felt like he was being demasculated a lot of times in their relationship. And I could see that because we saw that last season when um, PK tried to surprise her. Now, the surprise itself was tone deaf too. We're seeing... It's, it's actually quite interesting that that whole pretty woman surprise kind of explains both sides of what the problems were. If you look at last season, that whole entire deal, Dorit does not want to relinquish control, especially now that she actually has more control, more of a say, and is getting more, and has became more business savvy and aware of things. She now is like, look, I don't, there's a way of doing things a certain way. And her critiquing does come off kind of like not nice. It comes, it, I can see how it could come off as being demasculating, especially you doing those type of critiques towards your husband. And then from his standpoint, you basically surprise her you want to surprise her and reenact a film where, where the woman's a prostitute and is a trophy wife and doesn't use her brain or anything and is just a tag along. Is that how you feel she should be all the time? That last season, in a weird way, telegraphed what the grievances really are. But they do end up leaving. They, there's no yelling or anything like that. It, but it was interesting because Dorit, if you didn't know before in the first episode, it was very clear now, Dorit did not want the, the separation. It was a PKA thing. And even Dorit said the same thing in the after show. She's like, look, I'm willing to do whatever PK wants to do, but I am not going to stay married to someone who doesn't want to stay married to me. I'm not chasing after her. But at the same time, whatever we need to do to work through it, I'm willing to do that. But I'm not going to work through something that you don't want to work through. And that, that makes sense to me. So, and that's kind of what it is. PK threw in the towel. Um, 
And I don't think Dorit really was aware how much he really threw in the towel. I don't think she knew that he was done, done. I think she thought that all they were doing is giving each other space. But in his eyes, he was done. And, you know, I ain't gonna hold you. This was kind of something that I wish I would have saw maybe two or th like three or four years ago because I have been the Dorit before where I'm expecting, oh, we're just going through a thing. We're going to get back to it. Whereas all the signs were there. When you're done, you're done. Because I think a lot of men, not all men, but a lot of men, they see relationships in very black or white situation. There's no gray. And with me, I'm like looking at all the colors of the rainbow when it comes to like how I deal with things. Um, when it comes to relationships, I try to work through things probably more than I should. And this is actually one of the main reasons why I'm single. Um, because I know that about me and I'm just like, eh, that's something I work on in my personal before I go back to the dating world. And that way we don't make those mistakes again. Um, but yeah, this was good. And that's how the episode ended. Um, but yeah, I, so far, I'm enjoying Beverly Hills. Um, it's a very, very good show. And the after show, I even love what they're doing at the after show because it's tying up all the loose ends that you might have not understood from the episode. So um, I would recommend, when it comes to Beverly Hills especially, you probably should be watching the after show too because it does... Um, the way the after show is operating, at least this season, isn't as shady as it has been before. Yeah, there's some shade thrown, but it is tying up some loose ends. And the other thing that I do like about Beverly Hills so far is there's nothing really too deep happening. Yes, there are separations happening, but within the friend circle, no one's really going at it hard and heavy. Even Dorit and Kyle, it, it's, there's nothing happening where they can't come back from it. You know, it's, it's very, um, overall lighthearted, I will say, <laughs> um, not a lot of darkness, which is great. It's very refreshing and I'm looking forward to seeing more Beverly Hills, but I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I, I probably should say this before. If it hearts your comment, that means I read through your comment. I don't always respond to comments just because, um, I don't know. A lot of times after I do my reviews, it's like a, it's men in black over here. It's like, whoop, I don't remember why I said the review. <laughs> um, I, I just be kind of done with it and I don't really go back. Um, so that's the other reason why my response is, unless I respond right away or if I still feel a certain way, I'll respond back. Because the other thing is my opinions change a lot of times when I watch the show because the next episode might explain something more to me and then I change and I'm like, oh, I didn't look at it that way. Because you're getting like my immediate reaction of how I feel about the show and what I think happened there. But then as the season progresses, my mind changes, my opinions change. So I don't necessarily always want to comment on it in the comments because two or three episodes later, my opinion might change. <laughs> But anyway, but anyway, um, um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl, Sharon, a.k.a. the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and my cat, Whisper. She says hi, and um, I will see you next time. Bye.